Hi guys, Paul here. Hoping you guys are all having a great holiday. Looking forward to the new year. In my last talk, part of my subject matter wandered close to the subject of the red pill transition that men make and the anger that often comes with it. It's a subject that is no stranger to me personally, I'll tell you that. I've been there with the red pill rage, and in some ways, I guess I still am. To make this a little more understandable, I'll go back to my red pill beginnings, which, as I've often said, goes back to 1993, when for the first time I read Warren Farrell's The Myth of Male Power. It really was a profound moment in my life. As I've talked about publicly before, even my blue pill life was marked by a nagging suspicion that something was wrong in the world, something I couldn't put my finger on, but that nonetheless I knew was there. It's one of the reasons that the red pill analogy works for me so well. In hindsight, I can look back and see myself in the role of Neo at the beginning of The Matrix. I had the good fortune to know someone who played the role of Morpheus in my life, pointing me to Farrell's book, My Own Personal Red Pill. After binge reading the whole book, everything in my life changed. I would never view myself or the world around me in the same way again. On a personal level, I was elated. The red pill transition gave me the satisfying realization that I had been right all along, that I wasn't crazy, that there was, in fact, something wrong in the world. And at long last, at that point, I knew what it was. It was like countless confusions that had always baffled me suddenly made sense. And it gave me another gift. It was like almost instantly I was able to see through more bullshit in day-to-day -day life than I ever thought was possible. I could see through the games men and women played with each other and with themselves. I intuitively knew how to handle people much better and especially how to hold my own with women in ways that I had never even previously imagined. I've talked about all this in one way or another publicly over the years, but there was another side effect of swallowing those red pills back in 93 that I have not discussed that much. I was pissed. And by saying that, I'm not really doing justice to the truth. I wasn't just pissed. I was fucking angry, and not in a temporary sort of way. I was pissed in the kind of way that my anger had puppies, and my anger's puppies grew up quickly and had puppies of their own. It started as a general anger toward women, toward the expectations they had of men, toward their sense of entitlement and privilege and their lack of accountability. I perseverated on negative thoughts about women in general for about a year before I figured out that I was pissed at men, too, at all the white knights and chivalrous out there kissing the asses of these worthless women. It didn't take long before I hated the sycophants more than I hated the women. My opinion of women and of the men who enabled them sank into a pit of vitriol, and I wandered through a lot of life feeling more out of place than I ever had before. There was nothing happening online for red pill men in those days, so I had to content myself with the knowledge that I knew something that most of the rest of the world didn't, which of course was of little consolation to me in the bigger picture. Finally, it took me still another year to figure out that I was also, perhaps even primarily, pissed at myself. I looked back at my life to all the times I bowed and scraped before anything with a vagina, the countless ways I'd sold myself out. I looked at all the ugly, striking similarities between all the men I now detested and the man I was. I wasn't just pissed. I was embarrassed for myself. And my only consolation there was that the world around me would never be able to see that embarrassment, and they wouldn't understand it if they did. I was a single red pill in a very big, very blue ocean. So while my shame would never be apparent to people around me, my anger sure was. It bled over into everything in my life. I recall once going into a convenience store. I was preoccupied at the moment, and I walked in, and I did not even notice the woman immediately behind me. I entered the store and let the door swing close behind me, which apparently it did, pretty much in the woman's face. I wasn't aware of what happened till I heard the door open behind me and a female voice call out, Hey, whatever happened to being a gentleman? 
I turned and assessed the situation pretty quickly, looked her in the eye, and snapped back with my answer. Feminism, I said. The woman looked nonplussed, like she was searching for something to say. Finally, she responded defensively. Well, I'm not a feminist. None of you are when it isn't working for you, I snapped back, resisting the temptation, barely, to tack the word bitch to the end of my answer. The woman was so flustered by my treatment of her that she turned around and walked out of the store. The clerk behind the counter, a man that looked to be in his 30s, grinned at me like the Cheshire Cat, like I had just made his day. I don't know if I really made his day or not, but I do know that I'd made mine. It felt good to be alive, to be walking through life consciously. The anger was heavy, but I felt like I had the strength to carry it forever. This is, I think, an important part of the red pill experience that seldom gets discussed in any real depth. Indeed, it has only been in recent years that I would have been capable of such a discussion myself. After all, the woman at the convenience store tried to shame me, right? If I'd seen her, I would have probably held that door open for a moment just out of common courtesy. But I didn't see her. And so she tried to publicly humiliate me and question my manhood, my basic human decency, all because this silly woman had to open her own door. Because the man in front of her forgot his place and didn't tend to her need for privilege. You couple that scenario with a man who has recently broken through a lifetime of denial and repressed anger, and you can easily come up with a view of the situation that would measure not calling her a fucking bitch as a moral victory. And that's what we're really dealing with here. Men are raised with a slew of coercive messages. Do this. Don't do that. Get your do's and don'ts down to a fine, compliant art form or face the shaming consequences. Don't think of yourself, ever. Ignore your pain. Produce like a fucking machine and lay it at the feet of women. Man up and take that shit. Deal with whatever comes your way in silence or be relegated to society's reserved default trash heap for non-men. Make this kind of life such an unconscious standard that you would never dream to stop for a moment and think about the screwing you're taking. If you think about it in the correct light, the red pill experience for men is akin to that of a machine becoming self-aware, of a robot suddenly realizing that it's a robot and that it doesn't want to be a robot anymore. And then, imagine, if you will, that the robot still lives in a massive factory that depends on it to produce without thinking or feeling. The programmers, even the other machines, will see it as defective, as just a squeaking wheel. For some reason, they think the best lubricant is shame. And to be truthful, they have plenty of evidence to support that notion. Throughout history, shame has been used with great success to silence men with the malfunction of thinking they are as important as the causes and people they serve. In a world that operates like this, anger is unavoidable. And it would not be avoidable even if society didn't react with such idiocy to men who go their own way. The red pill experience is one of grief, and anger always comes with grief. Taking the red pill means a loss of an identity, a worldview, and likely the only thing red pill men have ever known. And it does not matter a bit that red pill life is a vastly improved experience over blue pill life. It is still a loss. Just as divorcing the most god-awful bitch on the planet is a loss. The process of grief will happen, and anger is a profound part of that. That reality challenges those who care to think about such things past the superficial level. Just saying that anger is a part of grief doesn't provide a complete answer to the question. For instance, if a man who enters red pill life through the gauntlet of a divorce is furious at his soon-to-be ex, I get it. When he vents, I invite him to vent more. Calling her a bitch and a whore and whatever other names come to mind is a needed and necessary part of his moving through the grief process toward a return to wholeness. Indeed, even if he needs to view all women that way, he should be encouraged to vent. He should be given a shame-free, supportive environment to process out all that righteous anger and resentment, all the pain and hurt. When the not-all-women-are-like-that police show up to try to shame him, 
I think the appropriate response is, thank you for sharing your opinion. Now shut the fuck up. However, if I see the same man five years after his divorce is final, still buried chin deep in the animus of his initial breakup, then I see things a bit differently. If he has not seen or talked to his ex in years, but he still fulminates at the mention of her name, and if that fulminating leads him constantly and consistently to a redundant diatribe on how all women are bitches and whores, I'll be concerned that he's wasting his life. I maintain that shaming him or even challenging his right to be angry is a mistake, but I will still see a man who is stuck in grief and not moving toward reclaiming his happiness in life. At this point, you may ask, who the hell are you to know how much anger any man needs? And you'd be right to ask that. I am no one to make that choice for anyone else, which is why I won't shame the man no matter how stuck I imagine him to be. Still, I do know that grief is a process, with anger being an unavoidable part of the journey. Going through grief is walking a path with a beginning, a middle, and hopefully an end. And some men, very sadly in my opinion, will never reach the end of that path and won't know the freedom that comes with it. Not that I would stand between a man and his desire to take his resentments in life to the grave. I look back on myself that day in the convenience store. I ask myself if my reaction to the woman was right or wrong. And I get both answers. At the time, it was right. It was the perfect reaction at the appropriate time. It was a part of my healing, and I wouldn't change a moment of it. Today, there's no other way to put it. It would be the wrong reaction. And not because the reaction was literally an error, but simply because I don't need that kind of reaction anymore. I'd like to think that today, in the same scenario, I would just smile at that woman, shrug, and move on, with no need to teach her a lesson that she was probably incapable of learning to begin with. Back then, I needed to strike back. I needed to defend myself intensely and emotionally against the attempts to shame. Today, I find those attempts more humorous than threatening. Back then, the sarcasm and ridicule I gave her was an expression of my freedom. Today, it would be an expression of my lack thereof. It is a long road for me and one that I am admittedly not through traveling. After all, I was 36 before I got my first dose of the red pill. Who knows how old I'll be, if ever, before I can call that journey complete. But I'm determined. I won't let the injustice and insanity of blue pill life dictate my state of mind, my anger, or my reactions forever. After all, if I did that, how valuable would those red pills really be? Escaping the prison of marriage and corporate life only to dwell in a heavy and cumbersome suit of armor that I have to drag with me everywhere I go doesn't feel like a solution. It certainly doesn't feel like freedom. Escaping the prison of marriage and corporate life only to dwell in a heavy and cumbersome suit of armor that I have to drag with me wherever I go doesn't feel like a solution. I'd rather take the lessons life deals me and do something better like moving through the red pill rage into red pill freedom. Thanks, guys. See you next time.